Hello, I'm Fruxius, and in this tutorial I will show you how to set up the jaw on your avatar to react to your voice in the NEOS VR. So when to set up this character so his jaw actually moves when you talk. So there is an actually a jawbone, but as you can see when uh, Pam talks, yes. it doesn't move at all. So first he needs to step out of the character, so try to put me this one, one again. There we go. And now essentially what we need to do, we need to map this character, we need to map the volume of the audio from the user to the rotation of the jawbone. So first let's uh, grab the developer tooltip, you can find it in the essential tools in the inventory. And let's try selecting around here, and let's open inspector. So see I have selected the tongue, so let's go a little bit higher. There we go, mouth, face. So I think we want the mouth, so this one this one looks correct. So let's look inside, there's these switches, so let's switch it to rotation. And now if I grab it along this axis, this is actually the one that we want to rotate around. So let's put it back into the default position. So we have the mouth here, and now we need to find a component which measures the volume of the audio. So I'm not sure if this character was set up with one, so let's let's select again and open under inspector. So I have this one preserved. And let's go all the way to the root. And here if I look at the head proxy, you can see there is audio output, but there is no volume meter. So we need to manually set up the volume meter so there is actually a component which measures the volume of the audio. So let's attach a new component. So you can find it if you go to media. Utility volume meter. The volume meter it needs a reference to the audio source, but because the source of the uh, audio is uh, set up dynamically when the avatar is equipped, we need to place a special component which takes care of that uh, when the avatar is equipped. And this component is called avatar voice note source assigner. As you can see, it's referencing the audio output, which currently has no source because this avatar is not equipped. So we, we need to set up another one, which will assign the source for the volume meter. So let's attach another component. Let's go to users, common avatar system, and here you can find the avatar's voice source assigner. So let's attach it. And let's set the reference to the source field, like this. And now when this avatar is, equ is equipped, let's select it. So now with this component set up, uh, when this avatar is equipped, you will be able to see that the source gets assigned. So Pem, can you try equipping this avatar? And you see now it's assigned to the whole stream, which is the source of uh, Palm's audio. Yes. So, and we can also see that the volume meter is now updated with the actual volume. So now that we have this uh, volume mm. measure, we can actually take this value and map it to the rotation of the jawbone. So Pam, can, can you please step out of the avatar again, so we can do some more work on it? So in order to set up the relationship, I'm going to use the Logix Visual Scripting System. So I'm going to go back to the, my Essential Tools and grab the Logix tooltip. So first I'm going to extract the interface for the volume meter. So I'm going to grab it. And then I'm going to press my secondary, which is the touchpad or joystick. This opens the interface for the volume meter where I get the actual volume. So the volume is number from 0 to 1 and we need to map it to, to an angle for the jawbone. So let's go over here and let's grab the mouse and let's open interface for this. So now we have the both interfaces. And let's also have a look at what the values for the mouse look like when we rotate it. So with the mouse open you can see there is a slight rotation on the x-axis. There is 0 and 0 pretty much on the other two. and if I select it again, so let's select another and let's select it again. So essentially the axis we want to rotate it around is the x-axis. As you can see, this is the red one. So it's going to be rotating along this direction. And if I grab the developer control tip again, and let's switch over back to the rotation gizmo. I'm changing the rotation around the x-axis. And I want this to go to around 30 degrees. So essentially it's going from about 0, I was actually try putting 0 in here. It's actually a little bit too much, so I think we need some offset, so let's put it back to minus 4. This looks pretty good for closed state. So now essentially we need to take the volume, and we need to recalculate this volume 
into this uh, x angle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the offset, which is the minus 4 degrees, and I'm going to create a node for it. So let's create input node. I want a floating point number, which is a fractional number. So let's create this interface. And let's put minus 4. I need to, because the volume goes from 0 to 1, I need to multiply it by some number, so it's bigger. So let's go to the operators. And let's grab the multiplication operator. And now let's plug the volume here. And let's multiply it by minus 30. Actually, we need minus 30 except the minus 4, which is uh, minus 26. So essentially here at the output, I will have a number that goes from 0 to minus 26. And I can add my offset to this number. So let's grab the addition operator. And let's add these two angles together. So essentially now it will go from minus 4 to minus 30. So now essentially I need to take this and I need to construct an angle from this. So first I'm going to pick four components because as you can see the rotation is represented by four different angles. So I'm going to use the pick XYZ and let's plug it, plug this into the X. And the other two they are actually zero or very close to zero so I can I could leave them as this but you can also plug some numbers in case you need to place certain offset. But because it's zero I don't need to I don't I don't need to have these because these are zero by default. So here on the output I have a three-dimensional vector which will be adjusted by the volume. And now essentially I just need to convert this uh, into the rotation which is represented by a structure called quaternion. So I have, let's go to the math nodes and quaternions. And essentially there's uh, a way to create a quaternion from Euler angles, which are these three. So let's pull this node from Euler. And as you can see, it accepts the dimensional vector. So let's plug this in. And on the output, I get a rotation. So let's plug this to the rotation. And now the relationship is pretty much set up. So now, uh, Pam, can, can you try equipping this avatar again while the, this is still all set up? There we go. Hello. And you can see the jaw now moves when he talks. Bok. Bok, bok. <laughs> so can, can, you, can you try Please. talking for, for a little bit longer, like uh, say a sentence, for example, so we can see it a little bit better? Hello there, I'm a... Uh... I, I'm definitely a normal, regular person with regular feelings and regular stuff. <laughs> okay, so you can see that Joe, it doesn't actually move that much. And that's because when he talks, the volume, it doesn't go all the way to one. So we could actually increase this number a little bit to adjust this. Let's try actually minus 60. Can you try again? Hi there, I'm still somewhat normal. <laughs> okay, so this is looking pretty good. There's actually another part, you can see that the, there's a little bit of a jitter because there's some random noise. So essentially we need to smooth out the, uh, the volume coming from the component. So for that there's another component which is uh, another node which is called smooth lab. So if I go back to the, let's go back to the math and there's a node called smooth lab. So let's create this node. And essentially this accepts two inputs. There's the value that we want to smooth and there's how fast essentially the output approaches the input. So let's plug in the volume and let's create a number. So let's try for example 10. And on the output we actually get a smooth out input. So let's plug this instead of the existing volume. And as you can see this uh, changes a little bit. As, as you can see, there's still a little bit of a movement because of the noise. Mm. Hello there. So you can see now, now the movement itself isn't as jittery, but at the resting position, there's a little bit of a jitter in the motion of the of the jaw. So what I'm going to do is I'm. I'm using a very noisy microphone now. Oh yeah. So, but we can we can get rid of that. So if I if I essentially take this number. I can subtract a certain value from it and it will essentially clip all the values below a certain threshold. So I'm going to grab the operator node for subtracting a number. Let's plug in the volume and let's subtract 
So I'll look at this, it's going to around 0 0.03. Let's try 0 0.04. Now it's going to be going to negative numbers. So I just I just need to make it when it, when it goes to negative, so it stays zero. And for that I can use the and in mathematics, I can use the max node, which takes the bigger of the two input numbers. So let's plug in the subtracted value here. And the other one is zero. It's zero by default, but I can put this here so it's a little bit more explicit. And if I plug this here, now it mostly stays at zero. So let me adjust the threshold a little bit more. Try 0 0.6 maybe. So now I can take this and plug this into the smooth layer. And now the numbers, they are very, very small. And now if I look at the jaw, there's no longer an editor. And now when Paul talks... Yeah. Hello. Seems to work pretty well. This looks pretty good, actually. So we can we can pack this mm -hmm. uh, together and uh, make it part of this avatar. So uh, can, can you can you step out of the avatar again so we can do some more work? Yes, I can. Thank you. So now that we have all of this set up, uh, essentially the circuit is now still part of the world, but I want to make it part of the character itself, so it stays with it and it moves into whatever world this character goes to. So first thing I'm going to do, let me just organize things a little bit more, so I don't need these display nodes. And essentially the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pack them under the character, so I'm going to click this one and this one. So now the whole thing is part of this character. And now I can essentially hide them. And the way to hide it is I can point at any of the nodes, and essentially I hold the secondary, which is the touchpad or the joystick. I wait until the circle appears, and then I release. And it essentially hides the circuit, but it's technically still on the character, so it should be driving its behavior. So let's deselect. And the character is pretty much done. So now when Palm uh, equips the avatar again... Hmm. Yes. You can see now it's working without Hello. the circuits being visible. So now that the avatar is done, you can essentially take it, you can save it into your inventory, you can put it into the avatar hub. So this is how you can set up your avatar with an animation right within NEOS using the visual programming system. So thank you very much yes. for watching, and see you next time. Bye bye. Bye.